day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. It is September the 13th, 2020. Guys, we are like halfway through the month already. And you know what? Next week, um, next Friday, the 18th, we have another new moon. Remember, and the Sabbath, they switched to Fridays now. Remember, we talked about this a couple days ago. That, um, during this next new moon cycle, <clears throat> everybody who actually celebrates the Sabbath Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, everybody will be doing it together. But also, the next new moon, for those who strictly celebrate it on Saturday, is the next new moon, which would be in, let's see, this is September to October, from October to November, uh, that new moon cycle, the Sabbath um, falls on the Saturday, you know, when it lines up with the new moon. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see the things that uh, transpire day by day. So we got another week <clears throat> until the new moon cycle. We're in, the, you know, another month. And it is, remember, the first day of this next new moon is what? It's the first of the fall feast days. It's the Feast of Trumpets. And that particular new moon is a Sabbath day, you know. So it is a no work day. And uh, we prepare for the rest of the feasts that are coming up. We got Atonement, which is nine days later. And then we have Sukkot, which will be coming up towards the end of October. Uh, it's not the end of October. I got it written in here. I'm sorry, from the 2nd to the 9th of October. The 2nd is the first day of Tabernacles, and the 9th will be the last day, the 8th day of Tabernacles. Remember, the first and the last day are Sabbath days. So, all right, y'all, let's go ahead and get today's reading done, because my kids already, if I know you're hearing in the background, so apologize ahead of time if they get a little bit too loud, because, you know, they have the tendency to do that. All right, Job 22, 23, and 24. It is a 251 of year two of reading through the books of the Law and Prophets, also known as the Old Testament. And in the two-year consecutive count is day 214. And those are the counting days without the Sabbaths and the um, no work days that are feast days that are added in. All right, y'all. Job chapter 22. <clears throat> Eliphaz's third response to Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Can a person do anything to help Yah? Can even a wise person be helpful to him? Is it any advantage to the Almighty if you are righteous? Would it be any gain to him if you were perfect? It is because you're so pious that he accuses you and brings judgment against you. No, it's because of your wickedness. There's no limit to your sins. For example, you have lent money to your friend <clears throat> and demanded clothing as security. Yes, you stripped him to the bone. You must have refused water for the thirsty and food for the hungry. You probably think the land belongs to the powerful and only the privileged have a right to it. You must have sent widows away empty-handed and crushed the hopes of orphans. That is why you are surrounded by traps and tremble from sudden fears. That is why you cannot see in the darkness and waves of water cover you. Yah is so great, higher than the heavens, higher than the farthest stars. But you reply, that's why Yah can't see what I'm doing. How can he judge me through the thick darkness? But thick clouds swirl about him, and he cannot see us. He is way up there, walking on the vault of heaven. Ain't that what a lot of people do? That, that is doing things in secret and private and think they're getting away with stuff. Will you continue on the old paths where evil people have walked? There they snatched away. There, I'm sorry. They were snatched away in the prime of life. The foundations of their lives washed away. For they said to Yah, leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet he was the one who filled their homes with good things. So I will have nothing to do with that kind of thinking. The righteous will be happy to see the wicked destroyed. And the innocent will laugh in contempt. They will say, see how our enemies have been destroyed. The last of them have been consumed in the fire. Submit to Yah and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. 
If you give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. He will be your precious silver. Then you will take delight in the Almighty and look up to Yah. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do and light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble and you say, help them, Yah will save them. Even sinners will be rescued. They will be rescued because your hands are pure. Job chapter 23. Job's eighth speech and his response to Eliphaz. Remember, they're still accusing Job of being unrighteous. And they say, you have got to have been doing something for all these terrible things to come upon you. You know, so what they're speaking is right in regards if they were talking to a true sinner. See, but they had no foresight nor insight from Yah that it was Yah himself who was testing Job, you know? Uh, I'm sorry, allowing, still testing him, allowing him to be tested, right? Okay. Job chapter 23. Then Job spoke again. My complaint today is still a bitter one, and I try hard not to groan aloud. If only I knew where to find Yah, I would go to his court. I would lay out my case and present my arguments. Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? No, he would give me a fair hearing. Honest people can reason with him, so I would be forever acquitted by my judge. I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. I tell you, what are you doing, son? But he knows where I am going. And when he tests me, I will come out as pure as gold. For I have stayed on Yah's path. I have, I have followed his ways and not turned aside. I have not departed from his commands, but I have treasured his words more than my daily food. But once he has made his decision, who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, he does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. No wonder I am so terrified in his presence. When I think of it, terror grips me. Yah has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. All right, y'all, last chapter for today, Job chapter 24. Job asks why the wicked are not punished. Why doesn't the Almighty bring the wicked to judgment? Why must the godly wait for him in vain? Evil people still land by moving the boundary markers. They steal livestock and put them in their own pastures. They take the orphan's donkey and demand the widow's ox as security for a loan. The poor are pushed off the path. The needy must hide together for safety. Wild donkey, Like wild donkeys in the wilderness, the poor must spend all their time looking for food, searching even in the desert for food for their children. They harvest a field they do not own, and they glean in the vineyards of the wicked. All night they lie naked in the cold without clothing or covering. They are soaked by mountain showers, and they huddle against the rocks for want of a home. The wicked snatch... The wicked snatch a widow's child from her breast, taking the baby as security for a loan. <clears throat> the poor must go about naked without any clothing. They harvest food for others while they themselves are starving. They press out olive oil without being allowed to taste it, and they tread in the wine press as they suffer from thirst. The groans of the dying rise from the city, and the wounded cry for help, yet Yah ignores their mourning. Wicked people rebel against the light. They refuse to acknowledge its ways or stay in its path. The murderer rises early, rises in the early dawn and kill the poor and needy. At night, I'm sorry, the murderer rises in the early dawn to kill the poor and needy. At night, he is a thief. The adulterer awaits for the twilight saying, no one will see me then. He hides his face so no one would know him. Thieves break into houses at night and sleep in the daytime. They are not acquainted with the light. The black night is their morning. They ally themselves with the terrors of the darkness. But they disappear 
like foam down a river. Everything they own is cursed, and they are afraid to enter their own vineyards. The gravel, I'm sorry, the grave consumes sinners as drought and heat consumes snow. Their own mothers will forget them. Maggots will find them sweet to eat. Ooh. No one will remember that. I don't think I'm, I might change today's title to that. Maggots will find them sweet to eat. No one will remember them. Wicked people are broken like a tree in the storm. They cheat the woman who has no son to help her. They refuse to help the needy widow. Yah, in his power, drags away the rich. They may rise high, but they have no assurance of life. They may be allowed to live in security, but Yah is always watching them. And though they are great now, in a moment they will be gone like all the others, cut off like heads of grain. Can anyone claim otherwise? Who can prove me wrong? Hey guys, chill. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. That was Job 22, 23, and 24. So let's go ahead and head to the blessing, which is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. This is how Yahuwah commands us to be blessed and how to bless us in his name. I'm scrolling too fast. This mouse. There we go. All right, y'all. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Whose name are we to put on people? We are to put Yah's name, Yahuwah's name, on his people. And he said he himself will come and bless us. All right, beautiful people. Love you. And I'll see you bright and early in the morning, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Boom.